What's up guys, this episode I want to do something a little bit different and uh, what we're going to do is just follow a tutorial together. So Fusion, the company that creates Passenger, um, they posted a tutorial basically showing you how you can build something like Google Spreadsheets where you have a table and users can be clicking on cells and everyone else will see where they're at and that outline, that border will move around. So it will look a little bit like this. Um, and you can see when people type and it keeps all of that stuff in sync, which is pretty interesting. So you, in theory, can create a very minimal version of Google Spreadsheets um, using this tutorial as a foundation. So that sounded pretty cool to me and it uses a technology called RethinkDB, which is an open source database um, for the real time web. But the cool piece about this is that it's a NoSQL database, so it's kind of like MongoDB where you don't have, you don't have columns and it's kind of focused around JSON and stuff like that. Um, but the interesting thing is that you can run queries and you can say, let's do our typical query, like let's look for all the um, games, the tables, order by score and limit the number of results to three. Um, but you can call changes on it, which will give you a real-time stream of changes in that database table. So this example here is basically generating records um, in RethinkDB, and they're just watching this stream happen. So anytime that one comes up that's higher than the other player's scores, it will go put that inside the top player scores there, which is pretty interesting. So... The um, idea of this is kind of that you can have your database understand that real time is more important these days. And so you can use this database in order to power your real time updates. Whereas right now, chances are what you have to do is you insert the record into Postgres, then you broadcast it through a relay job with, um, with your Redis, uh, broadcast happening in there in order to send that out to Action Cable and so on. So there's like a few steps and you kind of have to set them all up manually. Whereas RethinkDB would basically say, just insert the record into the database and just because you did that, the uh, stuff monitoring that streaming list of results will automatically go and make those changes on the front end. So it can automatically push that stuff over the WebSocket um, without you having to tell it to go do that. So that's pretty interesting and I wanted to check it out, but since I haven't um, I haven't used any of this stuff, I figured why not get it on a video and we can kind of walk through it all together and uh, take a look and see what we think. So um, the first thing they mention in this article is basically by using that real-time feed of changes, we can kind of eliminate some of the reason for using Redis in our Rails application. Like, we'll still need Redis for background workers if you're doing anything that needs that, like sending emails or whatever, but um, this is going to simplify a lot of what you're doing because you don't need to create those background relay jobs because this can kind of be a little bit more automatic in theory. So we'll see how they actually implement that and uh, see what we think as we go along. So like I said, this is what we're gonna be building. It will basically use this JavaScript library to create a table. Um, and then we're gonna be going and adding our CSS to draw those borders and whatever, um, and doing a bunch of other stuff there. And I didn't notice this until just now, but it's pretty funny that uh, they linked out to Go Rails inside the tutorial as well. So that's pretty cool, that makes me proud. Um, so yeah, let's just dive in. The first things first is that we need to create a Rails new uh, application. So I'm just gonna call it Spreadsheets. Um, I'm not more creative than that this morning, so Spreadsheets it is. So we'll let this install, and then we can basically set up the, the you know simple action cable stuff in order to make sure that that's connected. Now, I believe that this mount action cable server is automatic now. Um, and it should be automatic as long as you have channels. Um, this was more of a recent change in Rails 5, I believe, but uh, that I could be wrong on that. So it doesn't hurt to also mount this. It would just override if you do mount this and it is automatically set up, then this would just kind of override that, which is totally fine. 
So we'll go ahead and just follow their tutorial like step by step and do the exact same things. Um, and yeah, so we'll go into routes and we will paste in our mount action cable server there and we will then generate a channel for active users. So this, I'm guessing, will keep track of all the active users who are currently on your site because it goes and assigns you know, a color for each user and then that list of users that you have will show up with different colors so that nobody is you know, overlapping on the same color or anything like that. Okay, so we have that um, generated. That's just the empty templates for all that stuff. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing and create a spreadsheets controller um, with an index action. So we'll have that. And finally, we uh, want to set that root route so that we have uh, access to that uh, by default. So I'm gonna get rid of that uh, get route because we're not gonna ever access it through that. We just need the controller in action in order to set it as the home page. Um, and so, yeah, we want to run Rails server. And because we have that uh, channel created, we should have that action cable connection um, automatically connecting when we start this up. And there we go. So let's take a look at our network tab and set this to the WebSocket one and let's refresh the page and make sure that we're getting an action cable connection and we see pings coming through. So the subscription has been confirmed and uh, it is active, which is good, which means that that is working. And while I'm thinking about it, we can see about uh, disabling that route, removing that route, and then seeing if this still works. So um, that was the thing that I mentioned where the action cable route, I believe is kind of automatic now. And so it will just boot up as a feature as uh, you know required if you use it or need it. Um, and it appears that that is still working if we delete that route, which is cool. So this is like, upgraded to the WebSocket connection and everything um, seems to be working. So you don't actually need to specify Action Cable anymore explicitly because that will automatically come in there. And uh, I believe the development RB uh, or application.rb file, one of them, um, I remember seeing some Action Cable stuff in here that uh, yeah, uh, the environments file, you can set the mount path to nil if you want to like disable it. Um, but by default, I believe that it goes to slash cable uh, as the mount point. And that is the same thing as specifying the mount action cable server in your URL. So you don't have to do that anymore because it's the default. So you can disable it and then you can set your URL if you want to change that. Um, but you can also do uh, your allowed requests for production so that you can verify which domains you're going to allow uh, to connect over um, those web sockets. So everything seems to be up and running as we want and is up to date with uh, the tutorial. So that has all gone successfully as it should. It was just basic Rails setup, but you can run into problems with that. So rethink DB, we basically need to install this now. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to, you can check out the installation guide for it. You can go to their website or whatever, but um, I am going to make sure that we just install this with Homebrew. So if you have Homebrew installed, uh, and if you don't install Homebrew, it's fantastic. Brew install rethink DB. You can run this command. I already have it installed and basically it will, uh, show you some information on it once it's installed. So you can basically start the service by running brew services start rethink db, which will set it up to automatically run on your machine um, and restart every time that you re log in. So it will be there just like Postgres kind of like permanently running. If you want to do that, if you don't, you can just say rethink db that will run the server in your terminal and you can cancel it at any time and shut it down or whatever and it won't be running permanently you can also just kind of uninstall it 
Uh, if you run it permanently, you can turn off the services. You can say services stop, rethink DB, and uh, you can manage it with that. So I'm just gonna have it set up to automatically be running because uh, I may come back to this later or whatever. And we'll see once that's running that the rethink DB uh, console is open and you can take a look at this, which is pretty nifty because that's not something you get with Postgres or MySQL, you do not get a web interface for it. So you can't actually take a look at what's going on in your, in your databases easily. But this does ship with that out of the box and you can see how many servers are connected, um, how many tables there are and indexes and resources, all that stuff. Super duper handy because uh, this can be very useful to monitor once you have your applications running in production and you're kind of trying to figure out what are your performance problems, how much storage is it taking up, and you don't have to be a, you know, a Linux person to poke around at all that stuff like you would with Postgres or MySQL. Um, you can kind of just use it from a really nifty web interface and not have to do all the those things. So that's pretty cool. Um, looks like a very modern database, seems really good. I, I am excited for this. And it appears that uh, this no brainer gem is what we'll be using to communicate with it. It's an ORM for the Rethink DB. So it's kind of like Active Record, um, but basically it's not using Active Record. We're going to be using No Brainer. And this is sort of just a replacement for that because the way that Active Record works, it works really well for um, structured data. So you have your Postgres columns and your tables and it can look those up. But with um, these flexible databases, the NoSQL ones, you have a lot of interesting things that you can do with them, but they're not all structured. Um, so they, the ORM styles need to change quite a bit in order to accommodate for that. So no brainer seems pretty cool. Um, looks cool. I did notice before, like if you use devise or carrier wave or that sort of thing, like. They've already got some notes in here saying that you can make them either, they either work out of the box or you can make them work nicely with um, things like Devise, which is like a huge plus because a lot of people would be using those gem, gems. Um, so yeah, this seems pretty cool. Let's, uh, let's take a look and see how it goes. So I don't know what No Brainer Streams is. Let's take a look and see if, I don't see it there. Um, no Brainer streams this is likely those change feeds those feeds are going to be um a temporary gem that implements streams and no brainer uh so chances are they're hoping to get this merged into the official gem then and i believe that this is for um add module for rails 5 action cable streams pretty cool so this would kind of be uh adding overrides or whatever for those streams so that you could use RethinkDB instead of Redis. So we won't actually need Redis for this application because it will, instead, these stream froms, um, you normally configure your cable.yaml file to point to Redis. It looks like you would just be pointing this to your database and it would be using um, your database uh, configuration instead, which is like pretty cool. Then you have one dependency of RethinkDB instead of two where you'd have Postgres and your Redis uh, server or whatever they were using for that. So that's pretty cool. I believe that Postgres also has a PubSub thing. So you could kind of do the same things in, um, in PubSub with Postgres, but I haven't done it. So I'd be curious to see how that goes as well. So anyways, um, let's grab these two gems, put them in our gem file, paste that in, and we'll run, uh, cancel our Rails server, run bundle to install them. And uh, looks like um, because we don't need to create migrations, we don't really need to go and uh, do the generators for models. You can just edit the file and all of your fields will be defined inside the uh, user class or your model class. So you can simply just go edit app models user.rb, paste that in and you're done. You don't have to run any migrations or anything like that. 
it will automatically instantiate the table and the field and all of that stuff for you because that's what NoSQL databases do. And you can simply like delete this field or rename it or whatever you want and it will pick it up accordingly. It doesn't like automatically transfer the data if you rename this field, but um, it would create a new column in or a new key and value in uh, RethinkDB for you, which is nifty.